Let's talk some chess. This game was played in 1989 in Mallorca, Spain. The two players are Victor Kruperchek with the white pieces. He was a Belarusian GM and Jaime Nito with the black pieces. Uh, he's a Brazilian GM, and this game was not part of a massive uh, tournament. It wasn't part of the World Cup of chess or uh, the candidates or the World Championship, but um, it's a spectacular game nonetheless with some really incredible moves uh, and very much worth analyzing. So Victor kicks us off with e4. We have c5, the Sicilian defense, knight to c3, and a6. Preparing this uh, b5 move and expanding on the queen side but generally you want to move pieces and not pawns in the opening and we'll see if victor can sort of take advantage of this um, knight to f3 and now b5 as mentioned uh, so a lot of space obviously here for nito on the queen side and now d4 by victor striking in the center uh, c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and bishop to b7 fianchettoing the light squared bishop and attacking this pawn on e4 which is defended for the moment we have bishop to d3 adding uh, some more defense to the pawn and now e6 opening up the, a path for the dark squared bishop and uh, victor just castles king side and now queen to c7 and now already you can sort of see because of these three pawn moves that nito made in the opening uh nito i'm sorry yeah nito made in the opening uh nito has a uh, bishop and a queen developed whereas victor has three pieces developed and has castled king side already whereas nito's king is stuck on e8 so already uh victor um, opening looks a little bit better, and he's going to try to uh, push that advantage um, uh, to the end, which we'll see he does sort of in great style. So queen to e2 by Victor, getting his queen off the back rank. Knight to c6, developing. Knight takes on c6. Queen takes on c6, and now a nice battery um, with the queen and bishop on this uh, light squared diagonal. Um, and now a4, uh, trying to sort of break open the queen side. Basically, uh, Victor knows, of course, that this king is still stuck on e8 and wants to sort of just uh, break open the position as quickly as possible and try to get after this king, which is not very well defended at the moment. Um, here, uh, Nito just plays b4, so closing the position and attacking the knight on c3. And it might look like this is a uh, the knight doesn't really have any good squares to go to. Of course, you can't go to b5 because the pawn is defending. Um, if you go to uh, a2, then queen can take on uh, a4, although there might be some tricks here. I haven't looked into that line. So it looks like the knight has to retreat to the first rank. Uh, but actually, um, here Victor played sort of the first move of the game that let us know that this might be a very exciting uh, game with, uh, you know, some import to history. Here he plays knight to d5. Um, and it looks like the knight is being sacrificed to the pawn, but this is not a real sacrifice because if pawn takes knight, then pawn takes back on d5, discover check from the queen on e2, and notice that uh, the black queen is attacked by the knight, uh, by the pawn, um, and even if you try to block with the queen, then the pawn will take the queen, so here black is losing a queen, and the game would be over. So, of course, uh, Nito does not accept the knight's sacrifice, instead plays uh, knight to f6. Uh, now, uh, of course, threatening the knight, um, but now bishop to c4 by uh, by uh, Victor, adding some protection to this d5 square, and bishop to d6, developing the final uh, minor piece, and now uh, Nito can castle either side if he so chooses. We have rook to d1, um, adding even more pressure uh, to the semi-open d file. Bishop to c5, getting out of the way of the rook's grasp on d6. And now uh, bishop to h6 by Victor. And uh, this is another, you know another very interesting surprising looking move that uh, looks a little bit senseless but uh, the bishop cannot be captured because if pawn takes on h6 then knight takes on f6 and this comes with check um, and now after king to f8 uh, rook to d7 a beautiful rook lift from d1 the rook is now very active on the seventh rank the queen cannot take because the knight is defending the rook and this is a wonderful position uh, for uh, Victor. The queen is coming to h5 and teaming up on the f7 square. So this, this would be a total disaster. So you can't take the uh, the bishop with the pawn, but at the same time, the bishop is threatening the pawn and threatening to fork the knight and the rook. So you have to do something about this. Um, or so it seems here for the moment, Nito just uh, castles uh, kingside to get his king to safety. Um, uh, and uh, in the meantime here, instead of going for this, uh, taking the pawn on g7 and forking these two pieces, instead Victor plays bishop to b5. And this is, you can see, all, you know, the evidence is all still on the board. We have three pieces here on the fifth and sixth rank, which are being threatened by pawns. 
the both the bishops and the knight are being threatened by pawns, but um, for one reason or another, they you know they they haven't been taken. Um, in this case, the bishop, of course, is attacking the queen. The queen does not have that many squares to go to. Both b6 and c7 are guarded by the knight, um, and the queen, if it moves to uh, d6, it's going to be in the line of the rook on d1. Um, so the best move here, which is what Nito plays, is to finally accept the sacrifice. This knight and and bishop were not. Uh, the sacrifice wasn't accepted before, but here Nito accepts with A takes on B5. Um, but now the plan sort of springs into action for Victor, and A takes back on B5, and now you have a couple of things happening. You have the pawn attacking the queen on C6, and again, the queen does not have any good squares to go to. The rook and the knight are taking away these squares, so the queen is forced to move to d6, but you've also opened up the a file for your rook on a1, and this is going to be a very important piece as the defense, as the attack continues. So uh, queen to d6, and now uh, uh, Victor takes advantage of this rook that's x-raying the queen on d1, and plays knight takes on f6, opening up a discovered attack from the rook on d1 to the queen. So the queen has to move, and here the queen retreats to f8, um, and this is sort of a nice defensive move because it gets the queen out of harm's way, but it also protects this uh, g7 pawn so now the bishop cannot capture the pawn um, and in fact uh, it, it may look like Nito has sort of turned the tables here because now this pawn is forking the knight and the bishop and it looks like Nito will win back some material um, and in fact there's there's not really a good way to get out of you know losing one of these pieces here uh, Victor just decides to uh, capture with the bishop on g7. We have queen captures back on g7, but now queen to c4 by Victor. And now the pincers are slowly closing around this enemy king. We have the rook on the uncontested open a file. The queen is now on c4 and pinning the dark squared bishop to the king, the dark squared bishop on c5. Even this rook on d1 is uh, doing an important job uh, with the knight on the d7 square. So here, um, you of course can't just take the knight. Victor is just ignoring the knight on f6, but Nito can't capture the knight because then queen takes bishop and uh, this is not going to go well at all. So here, instead of capturing the knight, um, uh, uh, Nito plays uh, d6, adding protection to this bishop on c5. Uh, but it was in this moment that uh, Victor played probably, he's already played some incredible moves this game, but I think this is the moment where he plays the best move of the game. So take a second, see if you can find Victor's move while I give you a moment or two. Okay, so Victor would really like to capture this bishop on c5, um, because then the queen and the knight and the rook are going to be able to build a mating net around the enemy king. Um, but you can't capture the bishop right now, of course, because the pawn takes back. So Victor plays the move that allows him to prepare to capture the bishop on c5, which is rook takes on d6. Stupendous move. Um, Again, sacrificing another piece, not sacrificing to the bishop, of course, because the bishop is pinned by the queen, but sacrificing to the rook on d6. There's nothing you, you have to, um, well, we'll sort of see uh, what happens. But uh, if you if you accept the sacrifice, if rook takes on d6, um, then you've now left this bishop on c5 undefended. Um, uh, and after queen takes on c5 with check, all of your options are terrible. If you block with the rook, then pawn takes, and, and this is quite bad. Um, if you move the king to a b8 or d8, doesn't matter. Let's go to d8. Then queen takes rook with check, and this would happen if the king was on b8 as well. Um, and now with the queen and the knight and, and the rook, you're um, slightly up material, uh, it looks like, because you have an extra pawn or two. Um, but it doesn't matter because checkmate will be coming soon with the pawn and the knight and the queen, etc., etc. So, uh, Long story short, uh, the defender of the bishop has been removed by the rook. You have to keep uh, defending your bishop, and that's what Nito does with uh, queen to g5. Ignores this rook sacrifice because he understands how important it is to protect the bishop. Um, but now, uh, for the second move in a row, see if you can find the move that Victor played with the same goal in mind. This bishop must fall, and see if you can figure out how uh, Victor makes it fall while I give you a couple of seconds. Okay, uh, another just stupendous move. Uh, the queen is defending, the black queen is defending this uh, bishop, and of course, if you just take the bishop right now, then you're going to lose your queen. Um, so what Victor does is he blocks the path of the queen with the knight, 
plays knight to d5, uh, preventing the queen from uh, defending the bishop. And now you're just in uh, a world of trouble. Uh, and what's crazy is Victor is, you know, sacrificing these two, these two pieces, but uh, now it seems like the bishop is going to fall. And here, you can't just capture with the queen because of pawn takes back, and now you've just given up um, uh, a queen for a knight, and that's not going to work. So here, Nito tries and just takes... Uh, e takes on d5, accepts the sacrificed knight, but now uh, the pawn is blocking the queen from defending the bishop, um, and now uh, Victor can just launch his attack with impunity. So queen takes on c5 with check. Um, king has only one move because the rook is taking away d7. Um, rook to b8, and now uh, Victor finishes the game with rook to c6. And in this position, uh, Nito resigned the game because checkmate is coming in just a couple of moves. Um, the obvious threat here, if you do nothing, if you just play, let's say, uh, h6, ignoring this, then you get queen to a7, and this is checkmate because the rook is protecting the queen, and this rook is taking away c7 and c8, so um, that doesn't work. If you try to uh, get rid of this rook on c6, then checkmate will follow just a different way. Uh, queen takes on c6, and now... Um, Victor is threatening rook to a8 uh, with checkmate, and there's no good way to get out of this. The king has nowhere to move. You have no pieces that can guard the a8 square, so you just have to start giving your pieces away. Queen check, rook takes, uh, and eventually you're just going to give all the material away. And then finally, after all the material is gone, you'll just play rook to a8 with checkmate. Queen's protecting the rook, and this is just a, a classic checkmate. Uh, a classic finishing pattern. So um, the game ended in this position after rook to c6 when Nito saw this sort of idea and uh, just a fantastic game. I want to go back to the two uh, killer moves where um, Victor just realizes how important it is for this bishop to fall, removes the defender, uh, removes the pawn with the rook, sacrificing the rook, and then when the queen tries to step in to save the bishop, blocks the defense of the queen with the knight, sacrificing these, these two pieces along the way, and of course the sacrifices eventually allowed him to deliver checkmate although it didn't come out on the board but you know um sort of a, a the idea of checkmate was there uh so hope you enjoyed it just a, an amazing game some incredible moves a lot of great sacrifices uh and and yeah let me know of other games you'd like me to review drop a like and subscribe and we'll see you next time